the Atlantic slave trade, which began around 1500, involved the forced transportation of millions of black Africans from their homes to be sold as slaves in the New World. European colonial powers, in collaboration with African rulers, transported these enslaved people across the Atlantic Ocean to work on plantations in their American colonies. The journey was incredibly harsh and brutal, resulting in the death of many slaves. The Atlantic slave trade lasted for nearly four centuries before humanitarian efforts led to its eventual end in the second half of the 1800s. Slavery was already an established practice in Africa long before the arrival of Europeans. It existed in both Islamic societies in North Africa and in black African states south of the Sahara. Black Africans were traded across various routes, including across the Sahara, the Red Sea, and East Africa, to supply the Islamic world and the Indian Ocean region with slaves. In Europe, slavery had declined in the Middle Ages but was revived by Portugal in the mid-15th century. The Portuguese populated their colonies in Cape Verde, Fernando Po, now Bioco, and Sao Tome with black slaves and also brought many back to Portugal. When Spain and Portugal established colonies in the New World, they initially forced the local indigenous people to work on their plantations. However, the violent conquest and diseases brought by Europeans led to a significant decline in the indigenous population. This labor shortage prompted the Europeans to turn to Africa for a solution, and gradually, African slaves replaced indigenous labor in the Spanish West Indies and Portuguese Brazil. As the English, French, and Dutch colonized smaller West Indian islands in the 17th century, they established plantation settlements. Initially, much of the manual labor was done by poor whites, including indentured servants and convicts. However, over time, black slavery became more prevalent in these colonies. The Atlantic slave trade operated in a triangular pattern, giving it the name triangular trade. The first stage started in Europe, where manufactured goods such as metals, cloth, guns, and spirits were loaded onto ships bound for ports on the African coast. In exchange for these goods, slaves were obtained from various regions along the African coast, including the Gulf of Guinea, the Slave Coast, in present-day Togo, Benin, and Nigeria, West Central Africa, particularly Angola, and Southeastern Africa, controlled by the Portuguese. The Atlantic slave trade brought about changes in African slavery. While within Africa, slave owners typically sought women and children for labor and integration into their societies, the Europeans demanded primarily adult males to work on the plantations in the New World. Consequently, African rulers began selling males into the international slave trade. Most slaves were captured during raids on neighboring African peoples, but others became slaves due to criminal convictions or failure to repay debts. The captured slaves were held in pens along the coast until they were sold to European ship captains who sailed along the African coast, searching for slaves to transport. The second stage of the triangular trade involved the transportation of slaves across the Atlantic Ocean, primarily to destinations like Brazil and the Caribbean islands. This grueling journey, known as the Middle Passage, lasted from a few weeks to several months. The ships carrying the slaves were horribly overcrowded, with captives cramped below decks and chained to platforms stacked on top of each other. The space allotted to each individual was incredibly small, allowing them little room to move or even stand. Many captives died during the Middle Passage due to the harsh conditions, including outbreaks of diseases, attacks by hostile tribes at ports, pirate raids, and physical, sexual, and psychological abuse by their captors. The death rates on these voyages ranged from 10 to more than 20 percent. The peak of the Atlantic slave trade occurred in the 1780s, with an average of around 78,000 slaves brought to the Americas each year. British merchants were responsible for transporting about half of these slaves, while French and Portuguese traders accounted for roughly one-fifth each. Once the slaves arrived in Brazil or the Caribbean, they were sold at auctions and dispersed throughout the New World to work on plantations. The third leg of the triangular trade involved shipping plantation crops and products, such as sugar, tobacco, cotton, molasses, and rum, to Europe. Opposition to the slave trade was not well organized before 1800, although some individuals and groups condemned it. The abolitionist movement in Britain gained momentum in 1783 when English Quakers presented a significant anti-slavery petition to Parliament. The Quakers in the American colony of Pennsylvania had already expressed their opposition to slavery in 1688. By the turn of the 19th century, religious and humanitarian leaders and organizations brought the issue of abolition to the forefront of British politics. In 1807, Britain officially abolished the slave trade and took further action by sending anti-slavery ships to patrol the African coast. In 1833, another law was passed, granting freedom to all slaves in British colonies. While Britain was not the first country to abolish the slave trade, its actions had a significant impact on other nations. Spain signed a treaty with Britain in 1817, agreeing to abolish the slave trade in 1820. By the 1820s, Holland, Sweden, and France had also passed laws against the slave trade. Despite these measures, the demand for slaves and the potential profits from trading them kept the practice alive for some time. 
Eventually, concerted enforcement efforts contributed to the end of the Atlantic slave trade in the 1860s.